Hello there and welcome to lesson 4 in the series to learn programming in Scratch. In this lesson we will write a program to animate fishes swimming in the ocean and code plastic pollution to disappear when you click on it. Tons of plastic end up in the rivers of South Africa on beaches and in our oceans every year. It is caused by the accumulation of litter on land, poor management of refuse removal and floods. The plastic defacing our beaches and the plastic that ends up in the sea cause serious damage to the ecosystem. Sea animals can get entangled in plastic and the plastic also breaks up in smaller and smaller bits as it washes against the rocks to form plastic gravel that is fatal for marine life. There are five large areas in the oceans where plastic objects collect due to the sea currents. The largest one in the Pacific Ocean is called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, or the GPGP, which is larger than South Africa when you compare the surface areas. We need to reduce single-use plastic drastically. We can do this when we, for example, do not use plastic shopping bags, single-use plastic utensils and straws. We should also gather plastic waste so that it can be recycled to make other products. Unfortunately, less than a third of our plastic waste is recycled in South Africa and only 5% of the population actively helps with the recycling of plastics. The ocean has a significant influence on our climate and weather. It is the blue heart of our planet. We need to change people's mindsets and behavior around recycling to save our oceans. Now answer the questions on this topic in your workbook. In today's lesson, you're going to animate fish swimming in the sea. The go to and glide blocks you've used before do not allow you to change costumes while moving. Therefore, we need a new block. The blue move block is in the motion group. It moves the sprite 10 pixels in the direction it is facing without switching costumes. If you change the number in the opening or the parameter to a higher value, the sprite will move more pixels at a time and if you make the number smaller, the sprite will move fewer pixels at a time. Let's try it. In the code for the cat, link the move 10 steps block to the green flag block. Every time you click on the green flag, the cat will move 10 pixels to the right. You can let the sprite move continuously by using the move block in the forever loop block. The sprite will continue moving until the sprite reaches the right side of the stage and disappear. If you enter a negative value, the sprite will move backwards. You can also change the costumes in the loop to create an animation effect while the sprite moves. Add the next costume block you used in the previous lesson to see the animation effect. To prevent the sprite from disappearing from the stage, we use the blue if on edge bounce block. This blue block from the motion group checks if the sprite touches the edge of the stage. If so, the sprite's direction will change to 180 degrees minus the previous direction. For example, put the blue if on edge bounce block and the move 10 steps block in the forever loop and link it to the green flag block. If the sprite's direction was 90 degrees, the sprite turns to minus 90 degrees. And if the sprite's direction was 100 deg degrees, the sprite turns to minus 80 degrees, just like a ball would bounce away from a wall. The angle of incidence is equal to the exit angle. The direction always changes to 180 degrees minus the angle of incidence. You probably noticed that the cat turned upside down when he bounced away from the right hand side of the stage. This blue block in the motion group prevents the sprite from turning upside down when the sprite changes direction. Just set the drop down menu to the left right option. This yellow block in the events group activates code blocks that are linked to it when you click on the sprite for which the code is written instead of when you click on the green flag. So now you know two event blocks that can make things happen. When green flag clicked and when the sprite is clicked. Always make sure that the sprite you are writing the code for is selected while you're writing this code because when this sprite is clicked refers only to the sprite for which you are writing the code. 
Sometimes you might want to make sprites disappear or appear during the execution of the program. This is what the show and hide blocks in the looks group are used for. This purple block in the looks group will make the sprite visible if it was hidden and if the sprite was already visible, nothing changes. This block will make the sprite invisible if it was visible. If the sprite was already invisible, nothing changes. The sprite remains in the same position on stage as before. If invisible, you cannot activate any events like the when the sprite is clicked event, even though you know where to click. For example, now you see me, now you don't. Now let's create a program in Scratch with an undersea background and save the program as plastic pollution. Use four different fishes, all continuously swimming from left to right and right to left on stage at different speeds on different heights. Draw your own plastic object sprites and place five of them anywhere on stage. Code these objects to disappear when you click the mouse. Don't forget to save all the changes as you go along. Here's an example of what your program might look like. Use the design cycle again. Write down any questions you have about this exercise in your workbook. Then list two possible backdrops that you can consider in your workbook. Also write down the names of four possible sprites that you can consider in your workbook. Draw the design for the background and the position of the sprites and label the sprites in your workbook. Complete the algorithms for the fish sprites and the plastic objects in your workbook or write your own algorithms. And then write your program and use this rubric to check that your program meets all the criteria. Lastly, reflect on what you've just learned before we tackle the next lesson. Put on your white hat and think about facts that you've learned today. The red hat to think about emotions you experience today. The yellow hat to make positive comments. The green hat, any creative thoughts. Put on the blue hat to reflect on your planning and time management. And the black hat to make any negative comments. In the next lesson, you're going to use five more blocks in Scratch to make the flowers in a macro land blossom. Until then, goodbye.